All right, I'm Die Masters with uh, Better Off Damned, and this is in response to uh, living as an atheist. Uh, I was raised fundamentalist Pentecostal. I didn't even really know what an atheist was until I was older anyway. Uh, I mean, it, it's a lot like Southern Baptist, except the women can't wear pants, makeup, jewelry. Uh, the men can't wear those things either, except men can wear pants, they can't wear dresses. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same. No TV was a big thing. My grandmother was religiously in church, Wednesday nights, Friday nights, Sunday morning, Sunday nights. And she made me go to church with her. My grandfather didn't go to church. I, I mean, I saw him in church like twice, but he used to be a Pentecostal pastor. He actually led a church and uh, he dropped that for whatever reasons and never went to church. But though he was deeply, uh, I guess, religious without church, I guess that's kind of like that modern, oh, it's not a religion, it's a personal relationship crap. But uh, that's what he did. He pretty much just carried around a Bible and lived his life the way he wanted to and didn't go to church. But my grandmother went to church and she forced me to go to church uh, my entire life until I was like 16. Uh, my grandfather had a TV and I ended up getting a TV when I was a little bit older. But I had a computer before I had a TV in my room, which I think is kind of weird. Uh, there's a lot of contradictions in, I guess, my upbringing with the church and how we lived at home. But I did believe it a lot, in fact, uh, so much so that I ended up going to a Pentecostal private school that the graduating class the first year I was there was like three people. I was in a class that was like middle school to high school and we had like 10 students in it, right? And I went there for junior high until I was 16. And uh, it was a creationist private school. It's like it mentioned evolution as a footnote, saying that it was just a theory, it wasn't fact, and then they taught creationism in their science. Uh, it was the PACE system, P-A-C-E. I don't remember what that stood for, but it was uh, the PACE booklets. is pretty much Pentecostal A-C-E, I guess. But uh, it, was, it was pretty bad. Uh, it, was, it was, I guess now that I look back, I think it was bad at the time. I didn't think so. Uh, then, I around I was about 16, I ended up moving to New York and I ended up leaving that church. I went to uh, a Lutheran church, it's in uh, May, uh, Maybrook, Maybrook, Mayberry, Maybrook, Maybrook, New York, near Walden. It was the Goodwill Church, so it was pretty much non-denominational, anybody's welcome kind of crap, and it was led by a, a, an army, army chaplain. It was, uh, it was just popcorn Christianity pretty much. But yeah, that, that my, I, was, I was indoctrinated from birth and being Pentecostal, spoke in tongues, did all that kinds of crap. It was, it was pretty slow. I mean, I'm 27 now. I, the Pentecostal church, there was a lot of stuff that the pastors would teach that I personally wouldn't agree with and would bother me. And I would turn and read the Bible and be like, well, this doesn't sound like what they're teaching. And I would rationalize what it said for myself so it wouldn't conflict with my own views. And then moving to New York, I, I still studied the Bible. I mean, I hardcore studied the Bible. I've read it cover to cover close to a dozen times now. And I still open it up and read it every once in a while, <clears throat> especially when I need to look up a reference. But... It was, it was a pretty long transition because honestly, until uh, my roommate and I, we started running Better Off Damned and a couple of months before then, did I just realize that there's no point even having the loose deistic view of the universe and God that I had because it transitioned from being, there's one God, it's Yahweh, it's the Abrahamic God, it's you know set in stone what he knows and believes in that it's a personal relationship that he communicates with me i spoke in tongues to well i found out that speaking in tongues has been happening for thousands of years it's nothing new the brain causes it to happen it's called glossolalia i'm pretty sure that's how you say it it sounds like speaking in tongues but uh it's a psychological occurrence i guess and that made me question that part and after that it was pretty much i don't think you know, any church or anything has it right. 
and I don't even think the Bible has it right, but obviously when you look around, all this shit couldn't have just popped out of nothing, right? And, uh, you know, so I thought, well, maybe, maybe afterlife and everything was, was more of a personal thing. Like whatever your mind and you believed at your point of death is what your consciousness would experience after you died. Like, so if, say for example, say a Christian lives their life, right? All this good stuff. And they expect certain things to happen after they die as they're dying during that death experience as the oxygen's leaving their brain and their, the synapses are starting to fire as their consciousness experiences a hallucination of sorts. Going through all that stuff, and maybe it does surpass the body because of those outer body experiences and all that crap evidence that people say they have for a soul existing that doesn't hold water for shit. Yeah, I started believing that. And it's like, well, everyone is right. Whatever they personally believe is what's going to happen to them after they uh, die. Even if it's a bad thing, like say a Christian or any kind of religion that has the whole punishment after death if you didn't live a good life. Like say a priest, for example, genuinely believed this crap, but he molested little boys and never repented for it. Though he thought he did or whatever, and he thought he was going to go to heaven and whatnot. And because of that secret guilt he had, which probably doesn't even exist, uh, would cause him to experience a hell experience while he's dying. Uh, I used to believe that, and there's no evidence to support it. There's no reason to believe that, so I, I ended up dropping it. But I've only just admitted to being an atheist for probably the past couple of years now at most, at the very most. <clears throat> and uh, the transition from having any form of belief to just nothing, I don't care anymore, it doesn't exist, you don't have any evidence, prove it, uh, was really quick. But going from... Christianity to that took years, a lot, a long time, yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, there had to be something, right? Of course not. But, no, yeah, it took a while to go from Christianity, Pentecostalism, to atheism. And there was no choice involved at all. It was, I am no longer convinced that this crap exists. I can't believe it. I didn't choose not to believe it. I haven't made a choice about any belief. In fact, I try not to believe anything. Just try to understand as much as I can. Uh, my mom's pretty cool with it. My mom's also not, not doesn't go to church or anything like that. She claimed she believed the Bible. Uh, though she believes in reincarnation, which ironically, is supported in certain instances in the Bible, but yet is contradicted in other parts, of course. But, you know, she's not religious. I mean, she believes the crap because she has to, because she sort of lives with my grandmother, helps take care of her and whatnot, and if she didn't, my grandmother would throw a hissy fit. And, well, she's used to it, and she's older. Uh, my, the rest of my family, I don't know. Uh, my grandmother, I wrote a letter to them coming out as an atheist uh, last year. And my grandmother refused to read it because it was too blasphemous. And my aunt and uncle, I don't know if they read it or not. And my cousin, I don't know if they read it or not. Though I'm pretty sure my cousin, uh, who's a ghostwriter, he's really cool. I love my cousin. He, uh, I'm pretty sure he's read it, but he hasn't mentioned it or said it or anything because we, we communicate on Facebook every once in a while and I've shared the links and I, I know he sees the stuff that I uh, post and whatnot. I'm sure he saw it because I remember after writing the letter, I made a post mentioning that my mom said I should be a ghostwriter because of my writing. I don't think, I, I think she's just being biased because she's my mother, but uh, my cousin is a ghostwriter. And he made a status update shortly after that saying that uh, just because someone can write doesn't mean they can be a ghostwriter, which I completely agree with, which leads me to believe that he read that other blog post about the ghostwriting, which was in reference to the letter. So that leads me to believe that he read the letter, though he's not responded to the letter. Uh, my mom, I don't know if she's done it yet, but she was supposed to deliver the letter because I wanted a physical copy of the letter sent to my aunt, my uncle, and my grandmother who refused to read it. Uh, I don't know if she's given that letter to my aunt and uncle or not, or if she's given one to my cousin. But, yeah, other than, I, I don't know. <laughs> it hasn't really come up. I mean, me and my grandmother had an, uh, somewhat of a, con a confrontation 
uh, the, one of the last times I was up there, it was I'd stayed the night. Uh, when I wake up, I'm not a very pleasant person. I'm a very grumpy individual when I first wake up, especially since I don't get enough sleep ever. And uh, she had mentioned something, and we ended up getting on a discussion about belief, and it pretty much ended with me being like, "Yeah, what was it? It was uh, the prophet." It was Elijah, right? He was he was bald, and what was he doing? He was going up up a hill, and these kids were like, "Yeah, bald head, go up the hill, go up the hill." And then all of a sudden, he turned around and cursed the children, and two she bears came out of the woods and mauled forty two kids and killed them because God sent them. Like, yeah, God, he's a cool guy, and that yeah, that really pissed her off. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it doesn't really come up when I'm around my family. It's I don't bring it up because usually there's not really anything to bring it up about. Uh, the most, the closest things that would come would be that my family is pretty much all Republicans and right wing conservatives, and I bring up politics, and it's kind of a loose way that kind of gets thrown in there because I voice how I don't like how the Republicans always throw God everywhere and God's in our politics. I'm pretty sure it's it's known that I don't like God, not that he's real, I don't like the mythological character, you fuckheads. Uh, not that he's, that I don't, it's I don't like God, I don't like religion, I don't like the churches, I don't like the pastors, and I'm very open about that. I don't think they've really accepted, except my mother, that I don't believe in God. I think they think I just have a problem with the man-made aspects of God which I think all the aspects of God are man-made, so I don't know, it's, they don't talk about it pretty much. Uh, well, I consider myself an anti-theist. I kind of regret not being a miso-theist. I think that would have been cool because I still have yet to meet any miso-theists, people that believe in God but hate God. I wish I would have went through that phase because then I could be like, ha, I've never met anyone else that did that. But uh, I think God, the God belief at its core is probably a bad thing. It, it makes a person, I, I, I think the bad that it causes outweighs the happy, warm, fuzzy, good feelings it gives people. I think that the trouble that religion brings on the world really completely just overshadows anything good it's done. I mean, look at all the major uh, Abrahamic religions, even the other religions. It's, it's full of oppression. It's full of judgment, uh, judgmental thinking. It's just it's not good. I mean, pretty much all of the wars we've had, it's been based somewhat somewhere on religion. Uh, religion causes good people and God belief causes good people to do horrific things in the name of their God and not feel guilty about it. I mean, so I, I really think that religious belief, God belief, is a detriment on society. And I think it needs to be uh, eliminated. We need to evolve out of it. We really do because unfortunately we're at the point where we might have already caused enough damage to our planet to where we're fucked and that sucks. And I really do believe that religion has a huge part of, to do with it, especially the Abrahamic religions because they preach that God created the world for us to use as we will. The only problem with that is if we use the world as we will, we destroy it. We're, we're like a virus on this planet. And I think the God belief is a very, very strong brick in that foundation that we are feel entitled to be able to rape the earth like we are. And that's a huge problem with it. And then you have the equality issues that are going around because of religion. It has nothing to do with state politics. It has 100% everything. Uh, Marriage equality, for example, the only reason it doesn't exist is because God says it's bad. What the fuck? Uh, that should have no weight in determining what's legal and not. And yeah, I think God belief is definitely a bad thing. Uh, yeah, actually pretty recently, as in like the past four months, I uh, went for a job interview at a local PetSmart, and the store manager that was there is no longer there, I found out, which is a good thing. But it was an older woman, and I had the interviews, <clears throat> everything went great, and she was giving me a tour of the store, I was supposed to start later that week. And during the tour of the store, she asked me if I went to church, and I said, no, I don't, I don't go to church. And she's like, oh, really, why? And I said, well, because I, you know, I don't believe in that stuff. It's like, oh, you don't believe in God? I was like, no. She's like, so you're an atheist? I'm like, well, that's what atheist means. 
And then all of a sudden she had something really important to do, even though throughout the entire interview, which lasted like an hour, and the store tour that she was giving me, she wasn't busy at all. There wasn't any customers really in the store. You know, it wasn't a busy period. All of a sudden she got busy and then I never heard back from them. She refused to take my calls and return my calls. So I think that is definitely uh, being treated differently because of my belief or lack thereof. So yeah, no, definitely it's happened. Uh, I've had people uh, cut ties with me because I don't believe in God. Uh, I've had people tell me that I'm a rapist, murdering psychopath just because I don't believe in God. Uh, and I live in uh, the Houston area, and the Houston area is a pretty big buckle on the Bible Belt because you know the Bible Belt has more than one buckle. Because you know, where do you think America's obesity problem is? Yeah, they need really big, they have to put like multiple belts together, so it has like three or four buckles, and Houston's one of them. So, uh it's, it's interesting being an atheist in Houston and being open about it because I'll wear my Better Off Damned shirt and people look at it and be like, Better Off Damned, what's that mean? I'm like, literally what it says. Well, how could you be Better Off Damned? I'm like, well, how is it better to worship a misogynistic prick? And that doesn't go over too well. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely not as easy making a living as a magician being an atheist if it comes up. It, doesn't really come up doing magic and some people kind of expect it from magicians in most areas in the country people generally know that magicians don't believe in mystical crap even though they seem to do it the magician a good magician will be the first one to tell you that there's no such thing as magic there's no such thing as the supernatural I can just make it look like it exists and uh, most magicians are that way but around here in Houston it's like once people find out you're an atheist you don't have any more work. I have a feeling that's why DJ's Unlimited, a uh, DJ company here in uh, Houston, no longer uh, stopped hiring me. Yeah, DJ, uh, DJ Unlimited, DJ's Unlimited. They have a Facebook page. I actually confronted them on their Facebook page. They won't respond to me. Uh, I was supposed to have a whole bunch of work from them. Uh, and one of their employees, after a show, completely after the show, off the show property, and I were talking. And uh, we were hanging out because he's a pretty cool guy. And he brought up religion and whatnot. And he didn't really believe in any of it either. He was a deist, you know? And I'm like, well, I'm a fucking atheist. I don't believe in any of that crap. I think even a deistic view is silly. And we had a really nice conversation about that last time I heard anything from him. And I mean, I understand that that's, it's just speculation that that could be why they no longer hire me. Because every time I would do a show, they would praise it and be like, oh, that was great. Everyone loved you. The customers loved me. All of a sudden, I'm not getting the gigs I was supposed to get. I had a gig scheduled, and when I would call to confirm, no, no reply, no call back. Uh, all this other stuff. And it's just weird, the timing of it, that I had that conversation, and then I haven't had a show since. You know, so it, it's just odd to me uh, that, that the timing is just a little suspicious. And I, I don't know if that's what it was, but that's what it seems like it was. So... Yeah, definitely being an atheist in Texas, Houston, Texas, isn't as easy as maybe, say, being up in New York where no one gives a crap, you know, or in California where no one cares. In the south, below the Mason-Dixon line, you know, you got to be careful because there's crazy people here. And, you know, walking around, you have, there, there's these white trash rednecks around that are, that'll be like, oh, he's an atheist? Well, I can fucking do whatever the fuck I want to him because God won't be mad. God will be happy. And it's a scary thought because I've, I've had almost altercations with people to where it's like they look at my shirt and be like, better off damned, is that a band? I'm like, no, it's actually a, an atheist website. Oh. And then they get that look, you know, where they're just staring at you the whole time you're at a gas station. And even while they get into their freaking truck that's lifted 20 inches with 50 inch tires and freaking they burn out past your car almost hitting you, you know, and what, the whole time staring, it makes you wonder, you know, is it really safe being an atheist? But what are you going to do? You know, deny who you are? That just leads to more psychological trauma than you already have had to deal with previously in your life. So yeah, no. It's time to, to come out and stand up, I think. Definitely.
you would have to, for me to really answer that question better, you would have to define what you mean by spirituality. Uh, the obvious definition, no. I believe that things like meditation can calm you. I think that your mind is a lot more powerful than people give it credit for. I think that inner thought and inner reflection is healthy. A lot of people think that's spiritualism. I don't. I think it's electrical impulses flying through your brain that cause different chemicals to be released, which cause different outcomes. Uh, and I think you can manipulate that through like meditation and whatnot. But uh, as for like spirituality and metaphysical sense, no, I don't believe in anything supernatural. I don't think anything supernatural has ever happened in the history of ever. In the entire space-time continuum, not one supernatural thing has ever happened, no matter what anyone will tell you, because if it doesn't matter, ghosts, UFOs, all that crap, spirituality, if it was real, it wouldn't be supernatural. Because anything that happens that can be observed in the natural universe is natural, period. Cyanide, natural. That the plastic that makes up camera is natural. There is no such thing as unnatural and supernatural, in my opinion. Uh, but no, I, I don't consider myself a spiritual person in the sense that most people think of spirituality. Uh, if you consider being able to calm yourself and you know, fix your own psychological problems through meditation is spiritual, then sure, I'm spiritual. Other than that, no, I'm not spiritual at all, really. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe that you can freaking transcend your body in some metaphysical sense just because there's no evidence to support it. And personal experience is just anecdotal and doesn't, doesn't count as evidence at all and can be ignored. It's life. What are you going to do? Sit there and wallow and dwell on it? There's no point in that. There's no reason to sit and dwell and be like, oh, I'm going to die one day. Or, oh, my, my best friend died. Or, oh, my mom died. Or, oh, my dad died. People die. Everyone dies. Period. You extend the timeline far enough, everyone's life expectancy becomes zero. It's part of life. And if you can't accept it and you can't move on, you're going to be stuck. Uh, how do I deal with it? I can accept that it's part of life and that it's a natural thing in the universe and it's going to happen. Does it suck? Yeah. Yeah, sure, it sucks. People die and you don't want them to, but you can't do anything about it. As, uh, as the Borg would say, resistance is futile. I mean, you, you, you have to be able to move on because you can't resist it. You can't stop it. And wasting time trying or dwelling on it I think is detrimental, so I try to just move on as fast as possible. Um, everyone goes through the same stages, you know, denial, grief, all that crap. Guess what? When you know that and you know what the stages are, you're able to get through them a little bit quicker because you know what you're going through, you know why you're going through it. So I think it makes it easier to deal with it when you have a realistic view on what's happening in your brain and what's happening with your body and why you feel the way you do, I think gives you a little bit more control over how you feel. It happens. Humans are humans. Humans are going to create suffering, period. Nature is going to create suffering, period. It doesn't matter how far advanced we get. It doesn't matter where we are in the universe. People are going to suffer. There's going to be someone suffering over something. And everyone's suffering is different. It's just, it happens. It sucks. And all we can do as people is try to alleviate it as much as possible. But it's part of the world. It's part of life. It's part of the universe. And there's not much that we can do to stop it because it's always going to happen no matter what. There's no way to end all suffering. People are going to suffer. As long as people are losing loved ones, as long as there's not enough food to go around, people are going to suffer. The most you can do is when you see someone suffering is try to comfort them and help them.